Let me make one thing clear, okay? I am a cat person, and I am proud of it. So the least I can do is feed my boo the best cat food money can buy. I was elated when I discovered Smalls. If you're a listener of this show, you know that Miss Colleen does not live without her Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your refrigerator. And it's delivered right to your door. So make it your New Year's resolution to get your cat eating healthier with Smalls. It's 2024. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Mm -mm. Head to smalls.com slash rivalry and use promo code rivalry at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code rivalry, 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code rivalry for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Juan. Juan is this guy that I met um, when I was uh, when I first moved to LA. He uh, he worked. He was one of the managers at the Abbey. Does he? Is the guy that ended up working to serve that one? No, no. He's a manager at the Abbey. Didn't you hear me say he's a manager at the Abbey? Yeah. Well, you, you, you said he was. You said you said he was. I don't know if that means he went to serve. You said was at the time he was, and he still is to this day. Okay. Well, I don't know. You, you were a drag queen when I met you, and you're still a drag queen now. I'm about to say, you don't say he was the manager. I mean, that 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 would denote that he has changed his career. He's still he's no, a manager. I say, when I met Monet, she was a drag queen. I wouldn't say when I met Monet, she is a drag queen. I say when I met Monet, she was a drag queen. That's weird to introduce me like that, but go off, sis. That's not weird. When I met Monet, she was a drag queen. How else would I describe it? He was like, when I met Monet Exchange, she was doing drag. Okay. <laughs> We're moving on. So, ladies and gentlemen, I know, I'm not moving on. I was just talking about it. Okay, well, we got to talk about your little, your little, you know what? I'll, I'll give it to you. You ate it. That that uh, that uh, Madeline had a rap was was good. Oh, Matthew Morphosis. I mean, Maddie Morphosis. Why did I say Madeline had her? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, Patrick Swayze. <laughs> the last one. Like, well, where were you on January sixth? <laughs> That was good. You ate. You ate. Honestly, listen. I don't know why the girls keep trying me. Like, yo, I'm not. I'm not. I don't play games in these streets, son. Well, you are. You you're, you're giving very Nicki Minaj. You just said it's corny to do that. You said, oh, I'm putting out a big foot. You call me a big foot. Yeah, honey. We call the, the song's called Corn Beef. <laughs> Go check out Corn Beef on my YouTube page right now, honey. You want beef from a corny bitch? You're gonna get corned beef, baby. I'm dead. I'm fucking dead. I said, get up in your big wig. I know a bitch with a big wig. She got no gigs. <laughs> she at home eating figs. I know a bitch with a big wig. She got no gigs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, today's not about... We're, I, no, we will not get to her on this. Uh, she's a couple seasons away. We're going to continue yeah. on with every Rue girl ever. And we're on part 11. And we're starting with season 11. Look at that. We caught up. Bob tried to derail us. We can get ahead, and we're gonna. I think we're gonna. We, well, we definitely have a very little to say about this next girl. Uh, she was the first Do out you, on season oh. eleven, and she is Soju, who is one of the girls with a lot of controversy. She's one of the girls who was was accused of. Uh, oh no, admitted to actually some. Yeah, she admitted to some okay. sexual misconduct, and I think she like quit drag and like I don't know what she's doing now. I think she I think she works in real estate or something like that. She's also um uh, uh legendarily flew into drag race with a cyst on the airplane and attributed that three that reasoning to why she did not do well in the first challenge because she had a cyst that was percolating the entire time. But it was interesting that she that she, not interesting, it was she did admit to what she admitted to what she had done and and she now she and she stepped away from the scene, so that's what we have on Soju. Let's go on to Kahana Montrese, who is the your one of your one of your body goals. Kahana is one of your body goals. Okay. On All Stars, what was this one? Was it eight? Twenty. Yeah, yeah. she was on eight. 50, 50 yeah. million. All Stars eight. 
I have to say, I fell in love with Kahana Montrese. I think Kahana Montrese, I, I fell in love with her drag. I think she, I think she's one of these people who really, truly redeemed herself because she went home second in her season and she did not have the best showings. She came back. Mm-hmm. Hey, first of all, she's a uh, bitch. Y'all, y'all sent home the old body. Like her whole shit is new. She had new teeth, new face, new booty, new everything. And she looks immaculate. I think her body is so fierce. And I was really impressed with her drag. What her showing was so good. And I've I've met I've, I've met Kahana I think twice or something like that. Not not extensively. We were like just like oh hey girl good to see you oh my god blah, blah, blah. then on to the next thing. Um, every time I've met her she's been very sweet and she is living that Vegas life and she looks the fuck good. Yeah, she's a, she's she's a, a a a Vegas staple for sure. I was in her music video scores. I played the referee in her music. You video You produced scores. it, didn't you? I did not produce it, no. Oh. I just showed up and stood there. This is Brad Hammer. Bradley Hammer, correct. Yes. Who, who did uh, Unapologetically, correct? He did Unapologetically. I love Unapologetically. That was a good project. Um, but yeah, I, um, I did. Brad I Hammer. I that out. And, I mean, Would you agree? reached out to me. Not Brad Hammer. Team. I think at the time, Kahana was with Peach. I don't know if she still is or not. But um, anyway, hey. I came out and I did her music video. Really, really friendly. It was really, it was a really professional set. Kahana's incredibly athletic, as a reminder. And also, it's a really good video and she went out early i think she went out when she needed to to be honest and when she came back she was a much more um polished queen she, she's also now coco she's Mujizzi. stronger and she's coco's daughter yeah she's she's coco's daughter um mm-hmm. and um yeah kahana's great kahana 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 can't say enough about it's good thing about kahana she's great let's go on to um my mother and one of my oldest drag sisters i mean legit one of my oldest drag sisters I think your yeah, oldest she, drag sister is Bibi. No, I haven't known Bibi that long. I mean, like how oh, long we've known each other? Not, uh, not age. Oh, he's my age. Got it. I mean, Lady Bunny is probably my oldest drag sister. No, Sherry Vine. Sherry Vine is older than Bunny. That's right. Sherry Vine is sixty. Yeah, that's right. Um, but I, I, I've known Thorgy a little bit longer than I've known Honey, but like by uh, maybe a month. I happened to meet Thorgy through a friend who worked. At Jekyll and Hyde, who went to high school with Thorgy and Ron Konkama. Um, I had a friend who went to high school with Thorgy and Ron Konkama who introduced Ron me to her. Um, but then after that, I got introduced to uh, Honey Davenport just being on the scene back when she was going by Sir Honey Davenport and was, what about a Honey Made Sir, You Want to yes. Ask her to Be a Drag Mom? So when I was up and coming up in the scene, Honey Davenport was Sir Honey Davenport. She had just or not just, or maybe like a year before, had one So You Think You Can Drag. And she had like these like get out of spreads, um, which was the local New York nightlife publication. And she was just all over the place. She had, a, she had a show called Honey Makes the World Go Around. And I went to that show. It was really mm-hmm. good. And then so one night she was up at No Parking. No Parking was the very scandalous, sexy bar uptown. It was on, it was on, it was on 179th and Broadway, I think. And um, they used to have um, uh, the iconic Wednesday night <laughs> party called Cockfight. And y'all, it was just the sexiest black and Latino men in there with their fucking, in the sexiest underwear walking around. You can get lap dances. You can go to the back room and have a time. And Honey would host this party. So me and Jasmine Rice would go all the time. And then I, I was just enamored by how Honey was just holding court. She would sit on the bar and she would be like doing numbers and like selling boys. Not like okay, not literally mm-hmm. selling boys, but she, you know, she was she was the she was the, the host of the night. And then so I was so I just went up to her one night and I was like, and this was when I was in my um my lady drag. And I say lady drag because I was the type of drag that I would get up in. This was my um, this is my uh. I, I'm trying to not be problematic. <laughs> when you when you were when you were trying to present uh Wamana. Uh huh. It's like you a hook up to, with the you're trying to get the girls to think that you that you, you was you was <laughs> this is part of your uh part of your uh your journey that was giving uh you know one of the dolls low key. <laughs> yeah, honestly, can I be very honest? Around that time, like Jasmine and I, I would like I would say like at this time is this was a time in my drag journey when I was just starting out, and I was like, I think I might want to transition. And like mm-hmm. we like we were the jazz and I would like talk about it like all the time. And I was like, yeah, but I gotta like get a doctor. And like I didn't have like health insurance. Like I didn't know. Anyway, we're going into a whole other thing. Anyway, so I would like hook up with the guys there all the night all the time. And then one night, 
I had stumbled out of someone's car down the street. And then I walk up to Honey at the bar and I was like, you know, I think you're a really great drag queen. And I would just want to know, like, can you, would you be my drag mom? And she was like, yeah, I'll be a drag mother. And that- can I ask you what made you ch- ch- decide to choose Honey and not Baba Drag Queen, who was because who was Honey right was the there toast of the town. Dresses? Honey was very successful, and Honey was. Did Honey every- sell you a dress? Was this before or after I made you this dress? This was before you. Um, you made me the dress, mm. and also. I didn't mm. ask you. I didn't ask because you, you made me that dress. Because if, if that dress was anything of what I would get from you, I I would not have asked. Trust the dress was first not the reason all, I would do my drag. My first, of all, drag mother. <laughs> first of all, what I've given you, you can never repay me for. N- nigga, what I've given you, you can never repay me for. You could never repay me for what I've give, gifted to you. Anyways, so, and she said yes. I feel like a mother in my house robe. I know. You look ridiculous. Stop putting it all the way up to your chin like that. Why are you, why are you this doing that? Like, this is how mamas be. <laughs> when they be waiting for, you to come, when they wait for their baby to come home. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, yeah. And, um, and but full tea, and I've said it before, that's kind of where <laughs> the drag mother ring started and, and ended that same night. Drag her! <laughs> Uh, but, but I love Honey Davenport, and um, she was she was one of the unfortunate victims of that stupid six way lip sync they decided to do on Drag Race. Whatever drunk yeah, this- producer was like, I have an idea. We should have all six girls lips stupid. stupid. I think it might have been um, uh, RuPaul. <laughs> I don't I think-, think it was Ru. What, what? Not you being a Ru apologist. Ru said Ru said on the camera it was her idea. Ru no, said to not. all of us. Ru said, I will consult with the judge, but the final decision is mine to make. She said that every single time. I don't think that I don't think she's consulting on how they should lip sync. I think she's consulting on the results of the lip sync, not how it should how, not how it's gonna happen. You better make it up. Make it up, baby. Make Nigga, it up. You make it, make up, it up as you go, Mo. Mo, make it up as you go. You make create, it up too. Create, create, Monet, create create uh alternate realities, Monet. We You're stand. You're making it up too, Daddy. No, I'm just going off what RuPaul said. The final decision is mine to make. The decision mine. Have the lip sync, not but now. So so what? So you 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 think RuPaul is uh, hanging up the lights too? RuPaul is choosing uh 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 the fabrics for the motherfucking Interior Illusions Lounge. You know, I think what I know, and I know what I think. That's what I can say. <laughs> oh my God, what are you the fucking caterpillar? Are you the fucking caterpillar from from from? I think uh, what I know, and I know what I think. I was in Wonderland. I think what I know, and I know what I think. I think what I know, and I know what I think, honey. Anyway, Honey is a, is a supremely talented drag queen, and I love her so much. And I just think she's really just fucking. She's DJing every party. She she bitch. If there's a if there's a, a, a queer a drag event, Honey Davenport is a DJ for. She she DJ for the We're Here parties. She would DJ for like a lot of the drag race uh, New York and LA parties. I'm sure the ones yeah. at the other place. Honey's a she's she's DJing all the time. She's in high demand, and for good reason. You know, she DJed my um my album release party, my EP release party, um over at uh, the True. She asked me. She was like, "He was like, Mo, do you think I should do?" It? I was like, "Yeah, like uh, you should do." Like I was the one. I that asked who her what? what? Who asked who what? Uh, honey, when you asked her to do it, she was like, "I don't know. I'm, I don't really know if I want to like DJ for the thing." I was like, "No, I think you should do it." Like, like Mom did a great job on this EP, and I think you should like do it. What you mean she asked you? We were talking about it on the phone, bitch. Ron Kong Kamama. Ron Kong Kamama. Um, let's go on to, you know, I don't have a lot to say about this next queen, to be honest. Her name is Mercedes Iman Diamond, and um, she's from Minneapolis. Mercedes? Oh, yeah. I said Mercedes. Oh, I thought it was, why did I think it was one Mercedes? You thought her name was Mercedes? What is a Mercedes? <laughs> have you ever met a Mercedes? No, I don't know why. Anyway, continue. Mercedes Iman Diamond. She is. Um, uh, she's from Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is funny because two of the African drag queens on Drag Race are both from Minneapolis. Kind of crazy, I, like in a in a totally random, ironic way. I'm African. I'm from New York. I mean, African born. Okay, yeah. I agree yeah, that I am also yeah, African. Yeah, 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 clear it up. Nigga, clear your sinuses before you clear you your hand. Ha- okay? You better don't come on this. I talk about any what the motherfucking sinus. <laughs> You better jump talk about anybody's fucking side. I have a deviated septum. <laughs> you better that's the word sinuses. Do it. 
Um, she really deviated and kept him. Honestly, for you to bring it up is really a system. <laughs> Opelands, you earn everything. This is I the- think that's her most famous <laughs> quote from the show. She did not last terribly long on the show, but Ms. she left Amon an impact. Diamond. But she did leave an impact. She did get to have a viral moment, which I love for her. Um, I, and I actually really enjoyed her on the show, to be honest. Like, I thought she was fun. I, I enjoyed her presence. I enjoyed her her time. And can, yeah, you tell me, can you tell me one of the things she did on the show that you enjoyed? Um, I mean, enjoyed that. I mean, she didn't have a lot of time. She was there for like, I think, four episodes. You know what I mean? Well, you said you enjoyed all this stuff. I'm just asking this one of the things. I enjoyed enjoy. her presence and I enjoyed her time. I didn't say I enjoyed every individual more. I enjoyed her okay, presence. Okay, so, 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 also enjoying her time is one thing. Is there anything else you can say that, that you enjoyed? I also did not say like I enjoyed multiple moments. I said I enjoyed her presence and I enjoyed her time. And you're trying to make it seem like I'm, I'm, like I'm saying something crazy. Mercedes and mom being there, I was like, oh, I enjoyed Mercedes while she's here. How was that? How was that funny? What's, I don't get what's so funny about that. Okay, are you are you bitch? Are you playing t- Tetris or are you doing a podcast? Which one are you doing? I'm working Wor- for us. Work honey. for us. What? What doing? What? Mind your business. Mind your business, honey. Mind your beeswax, as the as the kids used to say. Can you tell me something about Mercedes Emma and Diamond? What did you enjoy about her? Anything at all? Um, I enjoyed her work in that, and when she did uh, the, they, 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 she had to do the challenge when it was the Wakanda thing, and she had a, she had a, a it was a flub. I think that ended up sending her home, um, but it was an iconic moment in her little Wakanda Forever thing. It's good. Sending her home on the Wakanda is kind of crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> like sending the African home on, and I feel like did Brooklyn win that challenge? <laughs> no, Brooklyn won the design challenge. Bob, come on. Who won that challenge? Jacob, do a little research. Who won that episode of Drag Race? Because that was kind of crazy. <laughs> if she went home on the Wakanda episode, it's you know? on the Wakanda. A. Anyway, let's go on to Miss Ari Versace, which I'm pretty sure didn't you and Ari, didn't you and Ari Versace have beef about something? Don't be trying to make it. Don't be trying to. Did, don't don't you did. To, what was it about a wig did. or something? It was not about a wig. Um, her and I did have a little bit of beef, and we cleared it up. And I apologize. I, I said I was in the wrong, and I apologize for it. Okay. Um, Ira you know? Versace. I knew Ira Versace before. Before she, she Ariel Versace was a popular queen before she got on Drag Race. Is it Ariana Versace? I said Ariel. I think it's Ariel. Ariel, like the mermaid. You know, she's named after the mermaid. Well, I have an accent. And that's how I say it, Ariel. <laughs> okay, Sebastian. <laughs> that's how I talk. So, okay, Sebastian. Ariel. Um, I she should... realize that I used to have to convince Monet that she had an accent. This was crazy back in the day. I had to convince Monet that she had an accent. Monet was like, I don't have an accent. No. I have a new Monet thought she sounded like she was from Ohio. <laughs> no. What y'all, as y'all know on this, Bob is the most hyperbolic person on the planet. And instead of like, I know I have an accent, but Bob would say, Bob was acting like I was talking like this. But that bunk and dick and dick. <laughs> Bobby Jack, I don't how this all started. Like we that. were at this, we were at this gig, and it was Monet and Yuha on stage together. And this guy in the audience was very attracted to Monet. He goes, Oh, you know the drag queens. I'm trying to get with that one. And I said, which one? And he said, the Jamaican one. I did Yuha, not say that. Yuha has an accent too. Yeah, not a Jamaican accent. No one could confuse you have accent for Jamaican. He said the Jamaican one, and that sent me because I know Monet's not Jamaican, and I also know that Monet has an accent. So I told Monet that she had an accent. I told Monet the story, and Monet was like, "He never said that. You're making it up. No one said that." I was like, "This guy said the Jamaican one," and that shit sent me to the moon. Fly me to the moon. And the like Jamaican the one. Who that sent me? Um, so I was just popular before Drag Race because her and her boyfriend, I don't know they're still together, um, they used to do wigs. And I think they did all of her wigs for her package for Drag Race. And um, and people, a lot of girls used to get Ari Versace wigs. And then they started like an OnlyFans. And, um, oh, yeah. And, uh, and they used to put their content on there. I don't know if they still do OnlyFans. I don't know if that's still her thing. But it was very, very, very... Uh... Ari Versace yeah. also got into like a lot of drama with other people. Like... She, I used to well, she a lot of people because she, because she was like she was one of the folks saying that the little mermaid shouldn't be black. Oh, where she said that? She was one of those folks. Yeah, her name because she her me. drag name is named after Ariel. Work, and she was one of the folks being like the little mermaid should not be black, and I was like, oop, okay. Um, but yeah, her and her boyfriend booked me for a gig before Drag Race. 
or was it before they were on drag? She was on drag. I can't remember. But it was in Philly. And I think she still lives in Philly. I think. Does she? I think. I don't know a ton about Ariel anymore, to be honest. Okay. So blow it up, Jacob. So what what um she said was I regretfully say that I hope so it was a she, Ariel Versace posted a um a the article that shows that uh uh that um Miss Bailey was gonna be um the Little Mermaid. And then um, she said, I regretfully hope to say that, I, I regretfully say I hope this isn't true. Not because this actress is black. She's literally stunning. And her and her sister are amazing vocalists. I don't know why she brought her sister into this. But, like, you can stay true to the character's integrity. Like, making the cartoon we grew up on, grew up with to life within the actress. This is becoming, this is coming from a natural redhead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure people would like a little... She would be a little angry if they were to cast Anne Hathaway as as Tiana from Princess and the Frog. Um, <laughs> and you know that was such a bad take. I, I I imagine she probably deleted this tweet after a while. Um, there's no way. There's no way she kept that up, right? Yeah, I I, I would hope so. But some of the people aren't really aren't really self aware. Um, let's move on to Scarlet Envy, who. Years ago, I took a picture of Scarlet Envy at um, at so I went through this phase. I go through phases. Uh, Monet will will cackle and tell you that I go through phases. One of my phases was I'm going to be a photographer, <laughs> <laughs> and I bought this camera, this like nice camera, and I was like, I'm going to take pictures of people. And, and I just remember in in my week long journey to be a <laughs> photographer, I took this picture of Scarlet Envy. At industry. And um, it honestly, I did not take a lot of great pictures in my lifetime, but I'm not gonna let Jacob critique it because Jacob will probably tell me that it's not a good picture. But it was it was one of the only pictures I can remember taking. And for some reason, she pops out in my head. When I think about her, I think about this picture. And you should you should be seeing it on the screen right now. You should be. In theory, in theory, you're looking directly at this picture. Um, now whether you are or not is is a whole different. Story. Just so y'all know, our editor Jay, we send him the images oftentimes, and he just chooses not to put them in there. Damn, Monet said under the bus. Yeah. D- damn, Monet said de bajo. I don't know how to say bus in Spanish. Bus, I'm um, autobus. <laughs> oh damn, you ate that. I think it is. I say bus actually. I know, I know it is. I know for a fact. <laughs> so the picture's here. So Jacob has the picture. You can see it, Monet. You can click it on the, in, our, in our group Let me message. See. Jacob, as a photographer, will you critique my picture? Can you send it to me? Did you send? How, it's in the, where it's, did you it's send it's in our group. Oh, you sent it on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like the composition of this picture. I wish there wasn't those people in the corner, but the comp- I like how she's not exactly centered. She's a little off to the right. I don't hate the composition. I wish the camera was straight. Also, you had a little crooked. Okay, I asked for Jacob. I didn't ask you. When I, when I yeah, say comp, I mean, we'll ask for your opinion. This is a solidly good photo. She looks good. Did you edit it at all? No, no. I, I don't have any editing skills whatsoever. I, I'm one of those photographers who just kind of does it in the moment. I also have a, oh my God, this folder is great. I have a great picture of, of um, from 2014 of Tony Award winning act um, actor, um, uh, Jay Harrison G, um, who's uh, one of the first non-binary people to win a Tony Award alongside Alex Newell. Um, and, you know, I'll go ahead and share that with you all as well while, while we're here just sharing all of my beautiful artistry. Um, here it is up on the screen as well for you. I really hope these pictures are up there because if they're not, this is so embarrassing, quite frankly. Uh, who came up with this postcard that's in? Was that her or you? She just did the post herself. She just turned it and looked at me. This is back, I mean, this is back when we were, I don't think she uses, they use she or pronouns anymore, but that was when we were drag sisters and they were doing drag going by Crystal Demure and we were just out eating and just having fun and just hanging out in, in general. But um, you, 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 bitch, you're, you're one of those photographers that don't take pictures. Tell me you one of these photographers. Bitch, when's the last picture you took? This is a good photo. Yeah, no, this picture of Jay you know, is a actually very- I don't I don't like this man in the background of the photo. I wish maybe right, it was a right. focus thing. Right. But we can fix that with Photoshop. Right. Um, but honestly, should I get back in my photography bag? How about you get back into your 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 every rue girl and say the next fucking bitch? How about you get into your makeup company bag? Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, God, Jacob, we are 
trying to make work up. <laughs> this this calls one of these. Oh wow. my god. Oh, By the way, Bomo will be dropping some products very soon. Everyone stay tuned. Go to BomoBeauty.com. Yeah. And by the way, we're going to be uh, performing for Netflix as a joke uh, live on May 5th. You can get your tickets at seethedragqueen.com. And monexchange.com. You always plug in Bob's website and on my website, monexchange.com. But the tickets, if you get them through my website, guys, they, you get them faster. That's not true. Yes, I have, a, I, have, I, have a, I have I have like a premium process on my website. Facts. I do. Well, okay. I will anyway. say that when I go to your website, I, I think, are the tickets like right there? Because I go to your website and I see I see the landing page and then I have Live. to press enter. Uh huh. And then well, see, when you, when you go to see the loading, loading, it takes you directly and now to I all press of my links. Live. And then I scroll. Also, I'm gonna be fully. When I I'm gonna screenshot this. It's not. I'm gonna share it. It's not on your website. Oh. Damn. Ate her up with that one, Jacob. Ate her up. So again, go to see the dragqueen.com, everyone, if you really want to see. Okay, so there it is. Yeah, where is it, Monet? Where, where is it? Where, Why don't you where, post? where are any of my dates? Patty getting fired. No, oh, so has, you uh, have no dates on your website. Alexa, and you're no, not no, she has two. There. She has two. Alexa, fire Patty, please. So Thank again, you. go to seethedragqueen.com. Do not go to days? Monet's outdated, non, non-updated ass website. Monet, do you have any thoughts on Scarlet Envy? Um, I love Scarlet Envy. Scarlet Envy is one of those people you meet every time I see her out at, a, at an event or like we bounce each other in the streets somewhere. She's always so sweet. She always has a very gentle smile. She's a very warm, a very inviting person. She always like she has that. You know, she's from Kentucky. She has that like Southern, like charm to her. Like, she always she had this smile. She's like, "Hi, girl." Mm-hmm. And she's always very sweet. I love Scarlet Envy. Um, we never we never gigged together. I don't think. Um, but I love 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 Scarlet mm-hmm. Envy. Um, let's go on to the next queen, Miss Raja O'Hara, who is. Who competed on on All Stars on um, season eleven, did All Stars seven, lost to um, Sonique, and then won Canada versus the World season uh, one. Yes. Sure. Now, yeah, Raja O'Hara has been on three seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race, and uh, I do love Raja O'Hara, and I think she is a fantastic drag queen. And I love her commitment to the color purple. No, I think she's really, um, I've always been a fan. Yes, I have from season 11. A- from season 11, I was standing Raja hard. And even though they tried to give her like this villain edit, which I was not vibing with, I thought she was very funny. The way that she reacted to certain girls in the workroom, her tone, her intonations, her, I, bitch, the fact that she went home and made that fucking outfit out of those burlap out of those burlap sacks, made those amazing fitting pants, made that top piece, had that hair piece, and she went home on that. That is insane. It was extremely well done. And, I mean, she was low-key a villain. I don't, <laughs> um, was she? How? I said low-key. Um, she would just, she just, I think she had a lot of emotions, and she didn't mind unleashing them on people. And um, she really, and also she was going against Evie Oddly, who was like the the victor. She was the the the, the protagonist. So if you're going against the protagonist, then it lends it lends you to an antagonistic um, lens. You know what I mean? Um, and I do love. She has one of my all time favorite quotes, which is of course her um, looking over at Sugar Kane and going. <clears throat> I will never not be obsessed with it. I will. I will always be obsessed with it. I will, and I will always be obsessed with it. Yeah, I look at some of her quotes here. They're so funny. Raja was so funny. She was so good. Uh, bless her and congratulations. She's a. She's a. I, I judged her winning episode. I judged her Canada Drag Race episode when she won, and she was phenomenal. And um, I love Raja. I love, 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 love Raja O'Hara. Down. Nice. Let's move on to Plastique Tiara, who, Plastique. who is the most followed drag queen out of every drag queen on the platform TikTok. No drag queen has more followers than Plastique Tiara on the platform. Not a, not a single one. Fierce. Let me make one thing clear, okay? I am a cat person and I am proud of it. Cats are great companions and cats bring so much joy to my life. So the least I can do is feed my boo the best cat food money can buy. And cats want a variety in their diet, just like we do, girl. Do you want to eat the same thing every day? 
I don't think so. So my cat's old food would stink, okay? So I used to dread every time I had to go feed her because I knew I was going to have to taste, smell that funky food. I was elated when I discovered Smalls. If you're a listener of this show, you know that Miss Colleen does not live without her Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your refrigerator. And it's delivered right to your door. So make it your New Year's resolution to get your cat eating healthier with Smalls. The team at Smalls is so confident your cat will love their product that you can try it risk-free. That means you get a full refund if your cat won't eat the food. Period. It's 2024. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Mm-mm. Head to smalls.com slash rivalry and use promo code rivalry at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code rivalry 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code rivalry for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. She has, let me see how many likes Plastic Tiara has on the TikTok platform. I mean, she is truly one of the girls who just made TikTok her bitch and said, I'll like she has um she has 312.8 million likes on TikTok. She has 11.6 million followers. She is she just really owns the TikTok platform in a way that is so unreal. Um she is one of the most uh widely considered beautiful drag queens from the entire platform. Mm-hmm. And she is uh, a great dancer. She's really professional. She's good at doing her own hair. She really does f- everything herself, y'all. Like plastic. She needs her own costumes. Um, sorry, not costumes, but in terms of like like plastic, like all of her TikToks and stuff she films. Plastic films all that by herself. She edits all of her own pictures. She edits all of her own videos. Um, and in this time, in like in this digital age of drag, that's very that's it's just money you're saving. It's money in the bank. Um, and she plastic- edited my um my plastic tiara TikTok. Yeah, she's great. Plastic is really good. I, I did a Plastic Tiara inspired TikTok and she edited it for oh, me. Oh, with the purse, the big coach purse. No, the fan? Yeah. The coach purse. Yeah, yeah. when she did my face. Yeah. Oh, also, you can go see Plastic doing my makeup uh, over on the YouTube page too. Yeah. And so I love Plastic. Plastic is one of my closest friends in drag. I literally just had lunch with her yesterday. And um, uh, I love her. Have you, ever, have you ever met Plastic's boyfriend, Steven? Yeah, I met him at the, at the Christmas party. Steven is so interesting. He's so funny. I love, I, I love Steven too. Um. Yeah, I love Plastic. Plastic is she's one of those people like she like like Bob said like very professional. Like I I say this all the time, y'all. Working with bitches who are professional that's like my fucking favorite thing. <clears throat> Work with a bitch that be late. Cause they downstairs to the van late. They get to the meet and greet late. They 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 at the club. You have to. It's just so fucking annoying. Say their <laughs> names. Bob the drag queen. Bob is in a very Say Bob is a very professional. Their names. So let me tell you right now. One thing I can tell you, y'all can ask anyone you have ever worked with if Bob the drag queen is professional, and there will be a resounding yes. Let me ask Violet Chachi that. Resounding yes. Let me ask Violet Chachi that. Yeah, please. It's, of all people, ask Violet. <laughs> of all people. Ask Violet Chosky, please. Um, yeah, I just love Plastique. She's just so dope. One of my favorite memories of Plastique. Can you say their initials of one of the unprofessional queens who's late stuff? Um, what, what did the first letter start with? Don't initial, just the first letter of the first name. What does it start with? Unprofessional girlies? Yeah. I'm trying to think. Just the you, letter. It's just been so long since I've toured with I've, I've really only toured with. You remember the ones who were late. Just give me the first letter, Monet. <laughs> Just remember. the first letter. Come on. I literally try to rack my brain and think who they are. Say their initials. M. Uh, Bob, you have to say one now, too. <laughs> say one, too. Oh, V. Everyone knows V was late all the time. <laughs> v and V. No, v and V were always late together. No, V is on, v is on time. I did a tour with both of these, and they were always late. Notoriously. I love them so much. They were always late. Both of these. Um, okay. The V from season seven and the V from season 11. <laughs> 7 11. Nine. <laughs> no, no, there's a V from 11? Yes. V, no, there's not. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Bitch, these V's can't get their shit together. These V's? What's up with the V's? What's with the V's? 
Uh, what of these? Um, anyway, so I love Plastique, and she is my queen. Let's. Oh, I was talking about. Ca- oh no. Um, let's go on to Miss Sugar Kane, honey. Mm-hmm. Sugar Kane was a New York City queen. Um, who was on season eleven? And Sugar and I, of course, obviously, I, I knew Sugar, but we, again, we didn't really. I think like as Sugar was working a lot in New York, that's when I had got on Drag Race already. I was like kind of transitioning out of nightlife. And so we did, there, there was obviously some crossover, but we didn't really work a whole bunch together. Like we were still around the same time, but we just weren't, didn't do many gigs together. But I like Sugar Queen. Sugar Queen. Sugar Cane is very professional. Also. Sugar Queen. I'm screaming. And she's, uh, <laughs> she's dope. I like Sugar. Sugar Cane also won Miss Look Queen. She was one of the winners of the Miss Look Queen pageant. And I really fucking just love her. She's just super duper talented. She moved. To like San Diego, and I think she's back in New York now. I think. Mm-hmm. I think. I'm not sure though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know a ton about her though. I know that she started drag later in life. Sugar Cane is 46. I think she started dragging her late 30s. I think she doesn't look. Or maybe her early 40s. She does not look. Say again. She doesn't look it. No, she looks great. Um, but yeah, she um. I don't really know a ton about her, though. I just think she's really talented. And she she was always in, in the encouragement going, mm-hmm, girl, girl, mm, girl. She said girl in her confessionals. She did. She did. She did. She did. That was like her thing. Um, <clears throat> let's go on to Miss Nina West, who was the, this season's Miss Congeniality. Um, I, first, I, first, I first met Nina before she got on Drag Race. She was at Axis. And mm-hmm. Nina was the, she was like, the, well, well, Virginia is like the queen, but Nina was like, would you say she was second in command, right? Yeah, Nina was. I, I would say that because of her position on Drag Race, Nina's kind of even low key sort of a little bit past her uh, her sister slash mother slash aunt uh, Virginia West. Um, they had and she's that. really like taken off. I mean, she's truly is the queen of Ohio. Like she is the queen of Ohio. Also, with you know Disney, I mean? she loves Disney. She, she's like obsessed with Disney. She loves that shit. Honestly, Disney gays. <clears throat> Disney gays, days and gals, too much. It's Disney. well, she hosted Disney Youth Pride over on um on, on Disney Plus. Did she during the pandemic? Yeah, she did. Good for her. Um, her yeah. and together hosted the Disney um the Disney Pride. Yeah, her whole thing is be wet, be nice, go west, or like it's like be kind. Drag is be kind. Drag is magic, or drag is magical, or something like that. Be kind, go west. Yeah, because drag is magic. I don't think that because Drag is Magic is part of this, it's just Be Kind, Go West. And those are not. different things. She has a song called Drag is Magic. Got but her, 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 her quote is not Be Kind, Go West because they're not saying Monet's, <laughs> Monet's is soak it up because you should be unapologetically. Uh, just <laughs> I don't remember. Just songs together. I don't remember. I thought I did it with something about Be Kind, Go West because Drag is Magic. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you're smushing too many together. You're smushing. I thought that was. Are you sure it's not the whole quote? Let me go look a click on her profile. It's be kind, go west, and then she has a song called "Drag Is Magic." They're di- they're different sayings. <laughs> they're not the same thing. <laughs> What's so funny? I that was the whole quote. What? I thought that was the whole quote. Be kind, go west, because drag is magic. No, that's not it. <laughs> um, oh yeah, that came from the challenge. She did a challenge with magic. Got oh, me. yeah. Now, Nina West, did, uh, she uh, was in sixth place, sent home by Silky Nutmeg Ganache, who has sent home many, many a girl. Also, Nina West is a, is a oh, I saw Nina West and she did, um, she did, she was doing the national tour of Hairspray and they did a stop in LA at the, at the, at the Pantages. When I tell you, Nina fucking killed that shit. Also, I didn't know that Nina, like I knew Nina could sing, but baby, she was on there doing runs. She was like, Nina was in there singing. I was like, I didn't, I did not know Nina West had that. I thought she would do like a obviously, like if you're, if you're on a national tour, you're like, you have to have some chops. I was, I thought it was gonna be good. I was gagging. She's up there like, what? like giving us runs. I was like, oh work. Not getting to see Nina in hairspray is is one of my I really I don't know if she's still doing it. Is there any chance they're still doing it? Is that a possibility? No, I don't I don't think I think she's off of it for sure. Girl, these these national tours be going on for a long. My friend um Devin Holloway has been doing Ain't Too Proud for like Almost two years now. Do I know Devin? I know that person. I mean, you probably met Devin through me in the past at, at like an event or just through my social media or something. She also, Nina West is also a very intense talk, a very intense talker. Like you want to Nina, she's like, 
She's a close talker. Nina will, and she, but she is, she is in your, I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, did I do something wrong? What happened? She's a very large person and a close talker. So when someone's like six foot three and standing over you and I'm like, yeah, bitch, <laughs> scoot back, bitch. It's a little menacing. It's a little menacing. Uh, um, one time we came to New York for DragCon and we stayed with Assad. This was before we lived here. Mm-hmm. And Assad was like, oh yeah, you can stay at our place. And we, so we got back from DragCon. We were exhausted. We went into our room. We went to bed. And then Assad threw a party, but didn't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> in the middle of the night, um, uh, like suddenly like, Everybody, like the entire apartment, like we could hear people outside. And Nina West came into our room because she was looking for the bathroom, but she just opened the wrong door. But I just like woke up in the middle of the, the night to like Nina West <laughs> coming into our room. <laughs> like a very large menacing man in the doorway. <laughs> but then she was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And then she walked out. In my mind, she just like gets in the bed and like starts talking to y'all like, hey, yeah, so you're going to sleep. <laughs> No, she she immediately walked away. Let's go on to wait, wait, wait. Uh, what is parties going on? Are y'all just in there sleeping? Y'all not gonna wake up and join the party? Well, we were we were falling asleep, and then and then the party happened. <laughs> but then, and we 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 weren't aware. But after the party's going up, when you hear the music, everyone gathering, don't you be like, okay, I guess we're gonna get up and join the party? No, we were bitch, we were sleepy. We <laughs> just done drag. We we had flown in from New York, so we were jet lagged, and we'd gone straight to DragCon. After that, and we were just like, we were done. That's hilarious. Word. Yeah. Um, and so let's go into Vanessa Vanji Mateo, who was on uh who was on the drag review. She's on season eleven of RuPaul's Drag Race, and she was on season ten of RuPaul's Drag Race. So this is you've 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 been on the same season as her before. I have been on the same season as, as Vanessa Vanji Mateo. You were her. there for the one of the most iconic episodes in the history of Drag Race, which There's we've already Vanjie, talked about. Yeah. Oh, we don't even talk about Vanji. We already talked about her. So we can oh, yeah, move we on. Did. Yeah. So let's go on to um Brooklyn. Silky Nut the the good Reverend Silky Nutmeg Ganache. I remember when this promo came out. And this bitch, I loved her promo. She, I think she had my favorite promo look from this of the season. It was so good. It was great. I agree. Silky has been on three seasons of drag. Where she's on uh, Canada versus the World. She was on um, All Star Six, and she was on um, season eleven. And um, when 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 the, when the when the promo first came out, the fans were lo- they were obsessed with Silky. It was like a protector at all costs. These things. Episode one, the way these fans turned. I mean, the way these fans. Turned on Silky was wild. Well, she was she was wild the way she was. Bitch, remember when because Miley Cyrus came in the first episode and Silky is like Silky cornered Miley in the corner. She's just like on some Nina West shit, and we're just like you know, everybody was like it's like to quote Jamie Lee Curtis, Miley everyone needs to calm down, on back up, back up, and whatever. Miley ended up getting on Silky's back, which seemed like I, I'm assuming that Miley put herself on the, on Silky's back. I don't think Sil- Silky threw her on her back. That would be that would be wild, um, and you know I think that Silky being a like a fat black person probably had a lot to do with the fans turning on her out of nowhere, um, but but also Silky was low key wild. Like Silky had some really wild moments. Like like if I I was ready to do so it was really a wild moment. If and I could see for my her, life, I was motherfucking ready. <laughs> And her uh, her season long vendetta against Evie Oddly was also low key wild, you know. Yeah, but I also remember in that same design challenge when they had they would have had like food and like whatever farm to table drag on the table. She made that like amazing like farm to table farm to table. She made that amazing like thing with the with the beans on the skirt and the things. It was really good. I mean, she basically recreated her silhouette from the from the the promo from the promo, which I mean, I'm not mad at. But but she might have covered the fucking dress anyway. Um, so let's. I mean, but yeah, she she is. Uh, she has come close to winning. I think she was she was in the finale on her season. She was not in the finale on season eleven, but she was in the finale on Canada versus the world. So she has solidified herself as a true competitor in the history in, in the drag race world. Um, and her promos stay stunning. Like Silky, you no, know, like consistently has very stunning promo looks. I think this is from her career as a pageant queen from the, cause you know, a lot of the pageant queens moved to Chicago, but I think Miss Continental is often is always in Chicago. Yeah. Um, and Silky was in Chicago 
doing the pageant system when she finished her master's degree in, in uh, communication or organizational uh, bit bop boop whatever the hell she she got a. So wait, how is she a reverend? I thought she went to seminary. What? No, they call her the good reverend. So, uh, RuPaul would call her the good reverend, the reverend nugget, nutmeg and notch because she's like very religious. But they called her uh, Doctor uh, Silky too because she has a because she has a master's. But there's actually only I think one or two queens who have PhDs, and Tempest Azure is one of them. Um, let's move on to Akiria Chanel Davenport, who is another absolutely stunning queen um, from the drag race front, cheesy. Um, she this bitch can make anything. Uh, Have you ever seen her? Like her, her. She's always making the most amazing clothes. I see her on online. Yeah, she's she's on All Star season six, and she was also on um, season eleven, obviously. Um, and she, I mean, this girl, she got pretty far both times. She got in like third. She made it to the to the to the finals um, both times. You know what I mean? Or third, fourth place on on the uh, on All Star, and then she made it to. The best of the same, I think. No, how far did she go on All Stars? No, she made the eighth place on All Stars. Never mind. All Stars, she did not go far. Yeah, but she made it to the to the to the to the rap lip sync part of uh of season eleven. Um, and she's one of the body queens who she gets was the body. Done. Yeah, she's one of the queens who gets the bodies done, honey. Yeah, her body is done. She also, um, did she have that piece for her confessional on season eleven? Am I making that up? The what? She had a what? A hair piece. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Um, I like Akira. I had her on as a guest on the pit stop, and she was very great on there. Um, and um, Akira is, is very beautiful, and her, her her body's amazing, and she's a really, really, really good seamstress. Yeah, she's she is very uh, Texas. She is super duper Texas. Um, but she's yeah, she's a fucking great queen. Um, well, but I don't really have much interaction with her, to be honest. But here's a queen you do have a lot of interaction with. Her name is Brooke Lynn Heights from Toronto, House of Heights. It's called Toronto. It's pronounced Toronto. She is a six foot three Canadian Miss Continental ass drag queen. She is the host of Drag Race Canada. She has probably been on the most seasons of Drag Race of any girl who's not RuPaul. She's on season 11. She was also is the host of every single season of drag of Canada's Drag Race. Uh, she was also on Canada versus the World. I mean, uh, sorry. She was uh, the host of Canada versus the World. Um, and, like, she has the resume, honey. Like, she is... She's a Miss Continental. She is one of the only like uh, non-trans women to win Miss Continental. I think there have been like three or four. I love Brooklyn Heights. Brooklyn Heights is also a good friend of mine, um, a drag sister. She's not a friend of yours. She's a friend of mine, darling. Do you, you know that's from? No. We talk often on the telephono. We Do chat. you want to know where it's from? Um, no. Um, we Do you think often... the listeners want to know? Probably not. All right, I won't tell you guys. Money doesn't want you to know. Go ahead. And then so we talk all the time. And I love Brooklyn Heights. Brooklyn always, we were getting our both our homes renovated at the same time. So we were commiserating on that a lot. Brooklyn is also a queen. A very, very professional. Very sweet. I love, 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 love Brooklyn. We also are both Pisces. And we often send back back and forth Pisces music to each other because we'd be like, ugh, girl, is, is ain't this shit true? Like that should really be describing us. We're very, we're very Pisces. Do you see any Pisces mean back and forth with Jacob? No. Because you're both Pisces, too. We're not. But we have the same birthday, and that's a special enough connection for us. Thank you, Jacob. You say you're not both Pisces, Money? We are. You just said we're not. And I said you're not. No, I'm not a Pisces. I'm a Cancer. We know. On your life. And trust me, we know. On your life. Yes, you are a tumor in my life. Yeah, honey. And I'm right now. You're going to get two more, okay? <laughs> bop, bop. Of uh, I love Brooklyn. I would, I would, I would, I would date, I would date and marry Brooklyn. She's not interested. Um, Brooklyn, she is, actually, she's not. Brooklyn, if you're interested, then go do it. Why aren't you dating? Because then I'm, why aren't you dating? I'm currently with someone. But, but did you knew Brooklyn before you knew Andy? So why aren't you dating? If, if you're both, so you would have. I would have, yeah. But, but, but no, no, no. But, but you and Brooklyn are so interested, and you're so in love, and you knew her before you knew Andy. So why aren't you? Why aren't you dating? Jealous? Why aren't you married? I mean, you sound jealous. Why aren't you the mayor of Toronto already? You sound jealous. Why aren't you the first lady of Toronto? Me and, huh? me, and Trudeau, me and Trudeau had our time. Now I moved on. Yeah, we know. He stole your makeup. He stole your foundation. <laughs> we know. 
We know. Do you know the song? Um, Glory, hallelujah. Brooklyn Heights is incredibly this talented. Is she is. Do you know the song? What? what? Do you know that song? What's the song? Glory, hallelujah. Uh, 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 this is what we come to do. I do Tear not. Tear down strongholds, break the chain. I don't. Brian I don't. Brooklyn Stop singing. Brooklyn I don't know it. To, 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 to you and I, we got a right to shake the foundation with praise, nigga. Stop singing. Can I talk about Brooklyn Heights now? Do you mind if I talk about Brooklyn Heights now? That's Since you went on and on about your about your uh, she's she's apparently the, the the Tupac to your Jada Pickett Smith. Apparently, <laughs> I'm reading that book right now. It's actually really good. So can I? Would you slam your hand one more time? Slam that damn hand one more time. See what's, what's going to happen to you. So Brooklyn, I mean, so Brooklyn Heights was um, was really known um, for her work at Play in Nashville because she Play actually I believe gave her citizenship by giving her a work permit. Because um, you know if you're not American, you have to have like a work permit or, or some sort of visa to come live in America. And she was she got it through Play in Nashville, um, and she's just such an amazing queen. I remember going and seeing her and just being incredibly impressed by her everything a little bit before she's on drag race and i was really excited when she made it on the race um and i agree she's she's really really nice super genuine like i can't express how genuine brooklyn heights is and how just and and, and i think she's probably one of the most deserving girls to get a franchise out of out of the, out of all the girls like she really deserved it she low key like was kind of the rupaul of canada for a long time and who do you think is the least deserving of the girls to get a franchise? <clears throat> um, I think when you get St. Lucia, it'll be you. St. Lucia won't happen. So take me out of the equation. Who's the least deserving? Why won't St. Lucia happen? Because it's not going to happen. There aren't enough drag queens. Why, why, why wouldn't they? I, I doubt St. Lucia. I, I'll be gagged if St. Lucia had, had 10 drag queens. So you think, you think you're the only St. Lucia who can do drag now? In St. Lucia? There's a queen called St. Lucia. Honey. Where? Where? From Dragula. She goes by Saint now, honey. She, she's from St. Lucia? I don't know where she's from, but her name used to be Saint Lucia. Now, now her name is just Saint. Do you know I saw a picture of? Her? I saw a picture of um, what's his name? Um, the one that won Dahlia. Da, da, uh, okay, yeah, Dolly. They're very Dolly. attractive. Oh, okay. I think they have an OnlyFans. Uh, yeah. To quote Bianca, okay. I'm like ninety percent sure. Oh, I'll find that. Um, let's go on. We oh, are we over time? How much time do we have? I think we, we're good. Um, let's go on. We should, let's, let's, I don't know what time we're at because, because we did that break. So Jacob, if you could just figure it out. I, I, I'm on it. Don't worry. Um, I'm keeping the track. Let's go. Let's uh -huh. move on. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Jacob, you, you all hear that little, that little, that little, that little, uh, light gather. That was good. Jacob, I like that. That was good. Let's move on to the winner of, um, mm -hmm. season 11 RuPaul's Drag Race, Evelyn Oddly, who is all the way from Denver, Colorado. And, um, she is a she's one of the most I would I'm gonna go ahead and give her the title of the most unique person in the winner circle. I'm gonna go ahead and hand Evie. it over there. I love Evie so much. Evie is so great. Doing all winners with her is amazing. Evie has such a has such a beautiful point of view on life. Like just talking to Evie with about shit that's not drag race and just hearing like I'm like she just thinks about things in a way that I don't consider. Um, I, I I really enjoy Evie's mind a lot. I love Evie. Can you give us an example? Like one day we were sitting down. Um, uh, you know when you had to like, well, everyone doesn't know this. Bob would know this. Before you start the day on Drag Race, like you sit down outside in this tent. Everyone's having their breakfast. And like before you like you walk into the workroom and whatever, they like gather us all. And we're sitting there and she was uh, working on some project. And she goes, you know, Screaming is really important. I was like, "What? Like, screaming is really important. It's just a really way to like clear your mind and get on like all like the oh like <laughs> energy like out of you. It's really important." And I was like, "Screaming?" She's like, "Yeah." She's like, "You just try it." And she goes like, "Well, like scream." She just goes, <sighs> "She's like, you see?" <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, I, I've heard people say that, and, and, and I've never. I've never practiced it myself because I don't have the kind of voice that can just be in these streets screaming. Um, yeah, I'm but not a I do like I do like Evie Oddly a lot, and she's just I haven't done a ton of gigs with her. I did like Pride at Barclays with her, and I think I did ooh, I mean like one or two random ass gigs with her, but n nothing but nice things to say about her. She's just 
So yeah. fr- I was really rooting for her hard on her season. And, you know, I, I know that we 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 probably shouldn't be Which talking season? about season? On season 11. She only did one season, right? Yeah. No. No, she did two seasons. Sorry. She did all stars. Yeah. Um, and I know we probably shouldn't be talking about this because we can't really show you guys this. But, like, I feel bad even bringing it up because I hate bringing up things we can't talk to you all about. We can't show you all. But when we did the, 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 uh, the reunion that shall not be named, Evie had one of the most beautiful moments. And it was so, it was like, there was like people crying. We were all like crying. Do you remember that, Mo? Yeah. It was really beautiful. And um, and you all will never know. <laughs> um, she- I will say she has, um, she has said, she has um, expressed public s- similar sentiments um, about the filming of All Star 7 publicly by this point. So it's not, this is not any like secret news. If you really are trying to figure out what we're talking about, you can just find any of the All Star 7 interviews that Evie Aldi has said yeah. publicly. It was just getting getting to hear her say it with her voice and getting her sisters to uh, commiserate with her. And she's a really beautiful soul and and a beautiful queen. Yeah, I love it. I was obsessed with it with her 11 promo. I don't know what it was about her 11 promo. Not gonna lie, I did not tag her as the winner from the promo, but I just loved her promo look. I thought it was so fucking cool. I thought it was just so great. I just remember posting like, oh my god, I'm obsessed. She came with and that then, car for her entrance look, right? She's like a, she's like a green car, I remember. I don't remember. I'm just talking about her promo look. I don't remember her entrance look. Also though. at the finale, I was there for the finale because that's when I stepped up for Miss Congeniality. When Evie stepped out on the stage. I mean the crowd, the 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 theater at uh something with an O. What did they film in downtown? The you filmed yours. There. Orpheum. The Orpheum. Orpheum. At the Orpheum, from everyone just chanting E V E V E. Like people were Brooklyn. Girl, it was crazy. I bet Brooklyn was like, God damn. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, Monet, so, so, we, so are we going to be able to stick to one episode, per, one season per episode? If you don't sound a bullshit, the reason why we got derailed, y'all remember, it was like episode like four when you were like, when Bob was on this vendetta for no reason for us to only get through like a handful of them for literally so no reason. Get clear, the only reason we're back on track is because of me. Y'all believe that well, shit if uh, you let, want to. Let me be clear. Y'all believe that shit if y'all want to. Uh, let me be clear. Uh, we are uh, back on track because of uh, the work I put forth. Track these what nuts. What are you doing? Negra. Can you pay attention to the podcast, please? Anyway. Do you mind? What was this work you are doing for us earlier? What was this work? Promoting our Patreon. Yeah, did you notice the influx in, in patrons today? You're welcome. Bitch, please. You're welcome. What influx? You're welcome, baby. What influx? You're welcome, honey. What influx? Obviously, you're not looking at the Patreon, or you would have seen it. No. Obviously, you're not looking at the Patreon, or you would have seen it already. So no. don't worry about it. Just just say thank you. No. Just say thank you is all you got to do. You know? No. Anyway. You're welcome. I have to go. Go what? Not promote the Patreon? <laughs> Bigfoot. <laughs> Spotify, a lot of, got a lot. It really streams my music. All right, bye, everyone. <laughs>